Hey folks, the horror nerd Todd Starooch here at the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival in Island, New Jersey. And I am sitting here with the lovely and talented and quite gregarious and funny Rochelle Davis. Rochelle, how are you? I'm good, but I mean, all those compliments, it's a little mushy. I mean, really? I, all right, go on, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> more, 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 more. Beautiful, gorgeous, amazing, and fabulous. Oh, All right, stop. All right, stop. stop. That's enough. That's enough. Is that a little much? That's enough. That's enough. Okay, Rochelle, how are you today? Let's start with that. See, it's, I told you to be easy. I'm, I'm great. How are you? I am just a lot better now that I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> and I got my free hug. You did. <laughs> free hugs, everybody. It's just a sign. How was the convention for you today? Awesome, awesome. It was a little hard getting here because of all the sticky, you know, kind of cold weather, but uh, I was determined as long as it didn't get too bad out there to make it here on time because I don't like being late and I don't like not showing up for things. So I got here and it's been awesome. I've been meeting really cool people and having a fun time. Just keeping it light and happy. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good way to be. Everybody's complaining about the snow and the weather. Hey, it's the Northeast and it's March. Go figure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't think, you know. I like every season we have here. Like, people that live in the Northeast and say, well, I hate when it snows or I hate when it's cold or I hate... I'm like, then why do you live here? Go, go somewhere it's warm all the time. That would make sense. I hate the heat. And Me too. I hate it. I will I will hibernate in the summer and live the rest of the year outside, and that's fine for me. That's why I don't live in the South. That works. But, you know, that's fine. If you don't like it, go where it's always warm. I think you might be my spirit animal. <laughs> I, I could be. I Yeah, it's possible. I'm a lot of people's spirit animals, I think. So, Rochelle, you were involved in one of the most iconic genre films of all time, The Crow. Why don't you just tell the viewers, all three of them, <laughs> uh, just, yeah, it's, uh, we're growing up, and, and my dad is one of them, so. <laughs> um, just, why don't you just tell us a little bit about your experience in, in such an iconic film? Um, well, it's it's crazy because my experience during the filming was it was one thing and it was very intense and amazing. It was a sp it was a very spiritual time for me because of the people I got to work with and how each one of them affected me at that very crucial time in my my life at a 12, 13 year old age where I was kind of becoming a person and learning who I wanted to be. Um, but I didn't know what it would become later so it had nothing to do with what it was later it only was what it was then and then fast forward maybe 15 years after it was um, released I had been in hiding for 15 years and I did my very first convention and was kind of awoken to what it was doing to the world without my knowledge and all the fans that were coming up to me and telling me their stories of what it did to them and how they felt about it and what it meant to them and I was like whoa like how did I not know that part of it I only had my experience of it and then I had to kind of integrate those two things together like what it meant to the world and their experience with it and how they felt about me and my experience actually filming that movie and what that was so it's been an interesting kind of you know ride um, the last 25 years after filming you know but um, but it's great, you know. It's something I'm very proud of, and um, and it was a wonderful experience doing it. So I don't, you know, I never regret it. And it's it's, I've spent more of my life being the girl from the crow than I did <laughs> not being the girl from the crow. So it just is who I am, you know. There are worse things to be. <laughs> Absolutely, I would definitely rather be this than a lot of other things, you know. Very cool. Um, so how did you feel when it was announced that the film was going to be remade? I get that a lot lately. Um, mm -hmm. I, it just kind of like an overall like... <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm not... I have no real interest in this idea. I don't... Everybody's had their different arguments about it. Like, um, I've had one person online say to me, Oh, well, this is James O'Barr's true vision of his comic book. And I'm like, Honey... I worked with James O'Barr. That was his true vision. That was what he wanted, a film noir about his comic book. 
that was what he put out. You're going to tell me now this is his actual true vision? Give me a break. It's a different version to make it look like his comic book. It's it's just different. And there's more technology, so he can do different things. Like, don't tell me that it's because he couldn't do it the way he wanted to the first time. He had full creative control over everything then. That's ridiculous. So every argument that's been brought up to me has just been squashed. And the way I feel about it, it's not James. I love James. He's wonderful. But Hollywood in general is going to cash in on that um, that popularity of the film as much as they can until they can't ever again. And that's the way I feel about it. it they're never going to stop doing that. And it's always going to disgust me because the reason they're doing it is because they can... They can use his death to their advantage. Mm. And the fact that he was such a brilliant actor in the first one to their advantage to try to sell something else. And that's fine if they want to do that. I'll never promote it. I'll never back it. I'll always not watch it. I've never seen anything but the first one. And I'll never watch any of the remakes or, you know, continuations and, you know, whatever. People post it on my page. I delete it off. I just give it no energy, you know, I just, and everything they've ever tried to do, it's always fallen apart. So I'm just waiting for this one too as well. I feel like hopefully, cosmically, in the universe, Brandon Soul's out there just destroying everything they're trying to do to remake it, just to give a little bit of justice to that, you know, filmmaking business trying to suck every penny out of it. That is probably the most well thought out answer i've ever gotten to a question about remakes i say that honestly because usually people just blurt out something like well remakes suck yeah. you know and it's like okay but there are some that were good you know but yeah. those were for films that probably should have been remade <laughs> and there's good reasons to remake films the reason that, that i'm so passionate about this one not being messed with is that he lost his life mm. and he put so much passion into it before he ever knew he'd lose his life it wasn't like he was like, oh, I'm going to die, so I'll give it everything I got. No, he gave it everything he got because he loved his job. He loved what he did. He was like me where he, f he really genuinely loved being an actor. And he put everything he had into that passion and that experience that it just meant so much to him. And for him to not be able to live past that point and that to be the last thing on his legacy, it's like you can't even have the respect to just leave that alone. I have no respect for somebody that can't do that. To me, that's like a sociopath. Like all you hmm. care about is money at that point. You're going to even cash in on this man's loss of life. And I just, nah, nah. So yeah, I, I, I have thought it out a lot because it means so much to me. I, I loved that man, you know, and he meant a lot to me. And, I can't stand Edward Pressman and you know they always say don't say bad things about people that you may have to work with again I would never work with him again I don't care if he sues me I hate that man He's he sickens me don't hold back tell me how you really feel yeah, he really sickens me I hate Edward Pressman it's gross okay so <laughs> wow <laughs> I could be nicer about it but forget it no 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 I appreciate the fact that you're honest and passionate about it I really do it's the honesty is refreshing yeah yeah it's just he's just you know I I, I feel like I, I what do I have to lose in that situation I don't you know I don't need that person in my life I need positive people and to me he's not a positive influence so it sounds like you got to know Brandon Lee pretty well that's that's awesome so just i know i probably could never ask you to condense it down but if if you could like if you could condense it down a little bit like what that was like just getting to be around him and getting to know him what what would you say well it's interesting because everyone i worked with really did change me the people that i got close to michael berryman robert zuckerman the still photographer alex press the uh director you know a lot of the people i worked with ernie hudson tony todd by you know i worked with great people and each one had their different effect on me brandon literally changed who i was because i had been on a brink of a spiritual path and being around him and just kind of having conversations with him about those things really kind of it, it made me decide on things that I was unsure of because I knew who he was as a person was who I want to be as a person. 
somebody that people looked up to, somebody that always people wanted to be around and they loved and they respected because he was so good to people. He was he didn't have a harmful bone in his body. You could walk up to him and he was just nice to you, smiled at you. He tried to remember everyone's name. He was just so wonderful. And I wanted to be like him. So it, it made me change my viewpoints just getting to know him in that way. And it was only a short amount of time. And now my 14-year-old, knowing all the things I've taught him about what I learned about Brandon, his dad, his feelings about spirituality and life, he has now told me over the last several years that if he could be if he could be anything in the world that would be the happiest thing he could you know make of himself he would be the type of person that Brandon was as far as being a good man being somebody that people want to be around and respect and love and it was probably the most like the happiest moment I ever had to know that not only did Brandon change who I was as a 12 year old little girl, but he ended up changing my 12 year old little boy through that. And that was incredible to me that somebody's soul could do that much difference in my life and then that could transfer into my son's life. And I use that still, he's 14 and when he gets off track I go, you know you told me and he'll look at me kind of sad or like you know I disappointed you and I'll say I still expect you to live up to that I still expect when you're a 28 year old man like Brandon was when he lost his life that you're that kind of man and that you could live on the way he wasn't able to and he'll kind of put his head down and walk away but he'll start to pick up his behavior because he knows that that's something I feel strongly about and that he feels connected to so if I could sum it up in any way that that's you know what it would be is that he's just his spirit has lived on way past the short amount of months that I got to know him wow that is amazing <laughs> that is one of the best stories that I have heard that is so cool just from what I have learned watching his father's movies and what i know about bruce lee uh, and the little i know about brandon um that that's amazing to me that that spirit and legacy has has passed down to your child that's really cool yeah it is it is incredible and, and you know there's probably times uh, during my life that i had thought you know is it just me did i have this connection with him that i I, it changed me, but you know, he was just a guy, an actor working with a kid, and it didn't really matter. And I had um, contacted his mother at one point through her email. I got a, an email for her and, you know, just told her how I felt about her son and how much I missed him and how hard it was for me when he la had been killed and such. And she wrote me back and had told me that she had several conversations with him over the phone when he was working with me about how close he felt to me and how many conversations we had that he felt so connected and how he felt like he was kind of practicing being a dad, you know, while he was talking to me, that we had this very, like, um, brother-sister kind of relationship that he felt like a very older brother to me that he was getting used to, like, what it was like to kind of guide me through certain things I was unsure about, sure about in life that he would have to do with, you know, essentially his son or daughter someday. And that, you know, she wanted to let me know that, and it felt good to know that it wasn't a one-way street you know I didn't think that we had this connection and it wasn't there he had felt that way too but I could never have confirmed that with him because he was gone and that I guess was a, a you know an open space for a long time but you know speaking to her about it was was really healing and I think it healed her too to know that we had connected again wow that is that is really really great that is really cool and those are some great stories to hear before we wrap things up, um, what are you working on these days? What projects uh, do you have going on? What are you doing with your life today? Um, well, mainly I raise my son for the most part, and he's a lot of work. But um, I also uh, do a lot of um, recording of stories for my ghostwriter. She's writing a book about my life. It's going to be ca called uh, It Can't Rain All the Time. So kind of fitting for everything and figured it would help people know who it was about <laughs> than right. just be some random name um but um i do that um i do a podcast online on youtube it's called the crow's nest um haven't done that in a while because i've had some transitioning in my life but gonna be getting back on track with that um do these conventions every so often and 
just kind of live and um, whatnot. I do um, tarot, tarot readings at different events and um, online for people and such. So just kind of a drifter, a mystic. <laughs> That is awesome. Rochelle, thank you so much for taking a few minutes with me. Those were some great stories that you shared about Brandon. Um, I wish you nothing but success in your life and at the convention this weekend. I hope you have a great time. And thanks again for spending the time with me. Thank you for having me on the show. You're welcome. Um, Rochelle Davis, everybody. And we will see you all in the next interview. <laughs>